Hi, buddy. This is yeah, Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast like 3.1, where we we'll learn what a hipster is, sense. as well as what um, ions, isotopes, like and ions of isotopes look like, what mass spectroscopy is, and how to interpret it. We learn that we always go through moles, fine percent composition, and empirical formula. Okay, welcome back, Will, who now found out what a hipster was, so maybe someday. All right, here we go. Parts of the atom. No, Charlie, it's not a hamster. They don't dress up like hamsters. They dress up like hipsters. Parts of the atom, a nice topic notation. How many electrons does this have? And this we went over a little bit in class. But remember, Z is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. And the electrons determine the charge. So if my protons has to be 22, and there's 22 positives, how many negatives must I have to have a positive 2 charge? Well, 22 positives and 20 negatives equals positive 2. The other thing I didn't do a calculation for is what's the number of neutrons? N-E-U-T-R-O-N-S. Neutrons. So mass is 48. So we look here. Mass. So mass minus protons equals neutrons. So minus 22 equals 26. So there we go. Aaron just figured out why I had 22 playing before. Atomic mass is set up assuming carbon-12 weighs exactly 12 atomic mass units. Okay, the mass spectrometer determines the masses of substances, and this is what it does. So we use our reference of carbon-12. Let's just say this is carbon-12. And you take a sample, and you turn it into a gas. You zap it with a bunch of electrons, so all you have is the nucleus. Okay, so this is the nucleus only. And it's being accelerated. Vroom, 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 vroom. So the positive nuclei, well, I guess that's right there, um, are going to be attracted to the negative thing and repelled by the positive thing. And depending on their mass, we'll tell you how much they bend. If they're the heaviest thing on the, earth, on the world, brrr, they will hardly bend at all, right? And if they weigh next to nothing, they will bend woo, all the way up there. So let's look at the data output of one of them. So what's most abundant? Well, the thing that's most abundant is going to be the thing that has the greatest intensity. The greatest intensity is the one that's going to have the most number of strikes here. So if I have like 90 strikes here and 12 strikes here and 6 strikes here, it doesn't have to be like that. We'll call it 16 just so they're different. This would be the, most, the highest peak, the next one, and the next one. So this is the highest peak, so this is the most abundant. So if I have a sample of chlorine, chlorine I hope you know is diatomic, right? And if chlorine weighs about 35.45 as its average mass, wouldn't it make sense that double 35 is about 70? Okay? But that's the average mass to go through this. So these guys right here that are so heavy relative to chlorine, chlorine is 17 over something, right? So looking at this, 39, 38, 37, there's chlorine 37. There is chlorine 35. Okay, so what's more abundant? Well, let's hop into it. Which represent diatomic molecules? These guys do. Okay, now why? This is weird. I've got 70, I've got 72. I don't know about you, I'm feeling 72. So, and 74. So, how do I get these? So, if I've got 35, this one right here must be 35 plus 35. And this is the most abundant, so it makes sense that that would be the next most abundant. Okay. Then right here, 72 could be 35 plus 37. I don't know about you. I'm feeling 72. And then this one is going to be 37 plus 37, which would, would be 74, which nothing rhymes with, which is sad. Okay. Why three diatomic masses? Do, do, do. Just did that. What is M over Z? Um, it's the ratio of mass per um, nuclear charge. And then they scale it, so it basically gives you the mass, which is so weird. I don't know why they don't call it the mass, but that's what is the ratio of mass to the nuclear charge. Notice that the atom's peak height are in a ratio of 3 to 1. So notice this is roughly a 3 to 1 abundance, right? So what is the percent abundance for this? So if this one is um, 22, right? Well, so here's one, here's another, here's a third, right? So that means there's four total things. So the percent abundance would be 
we're going to notice that three to one ratio, but there's four parts. One fourth, this guy, right, equals 25%. And this is roughed out. And then three fourths equals 75%. Okay? So that's where that comes from. Okay? And that's a, a pretty good estimation you can pull from that. The mole. Holy moly! Fundamental definition of the amount. So that is the unit for amount. It's 6.02 E23. So what do you know the mole is? The unit for amount. And it's 6.02 E23. Yes, you need to know that. If you prefer to use the old school times 10 to the 23rd, absolutely correct. This is the engineering notation. Gram atomic mass of a mole of sodium is just what the periodic table says. Notice this is the average, which we learned how to calculate a podcast or two ago. What is the mass of 1.76 moles of magnesium cyanide? You go, oh, great, I'm so glad I know my ions, and you actually do. Magnesium from the periodic table is plus 2. Cyanide is minus 1. So to get the right formula for it, it's MgCn. Take it twice. So now I want to add up how much one magnesium is, two carbons, and two nitrogens, and this two distributes out. So if I go to the periodic table, the bottom number is 24.31 for magnesium. Carbon is 12.01 times 2, 24.02. And nitrogen is 14.01 times 2, 28.02. And again, this 2, I could have written it, I, you would be wrong, C2N2, but it means the same. So I have to double the carbon and double um, the nitrogen. So, handy dandy calculator. Clear, clear, clear. 24.31 plus 24.02 plus 28.02. And I get 76.35. Then the units for this are either AMUs or grams per mole. How many atoms total are in barium hydroxide? How many atoms total are in 2.50? Did I ask the question right? I did my thing wrong. Whoops. Welcome to me not paying attention. This is grams per mole. That would be the mass of one mole, but I have 1.76 moles. 1.76 moles of MgCn taken twice times dividing bar. Now, factor label method, you're going to cancel moles of magnesium cyanide because you hate them. Put it on the bottom to cancel. And go into grams of magnesium cyanide. And one mole. Little g stands for grams. That stands for go to the periodic table. Say hi, Maura. Hi. Okay. And that is 76.35. So 1.76 times 76.35 equals 134.38 grams. Say hi, Maria. Hi. Okay. All right. So how many atoms total are in 2.50 grams of barium hydroxide? So I'm given 2.50 grams of barium hydroxide. And I'm going to cancel grams of barium hydroxide by putting it on the bottom. I need an equivalency on top. So one mole of barium hydroxide equals the molar mass of barium hydroxide. Now, I have to find the molar mass of barium, and I don't have a periodic table with me, so I should go to the internet to find one, but I don't. I believe it's something like 147. So I'm going to go to the periodic table, find barium. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just going to go to my handy dandy little periodic table app. I know, it's kind of embarrassing I have one. And I'm going to look for barium. Oh, it's got a legal notice. Would you just let me do my thing? Okay, search, whatever barium and all this and it was 137.3 and oxygen is 16.00 and hydrogen is 1.01 these both have to be multiplied by 2 so my total mass is 137.3 plus 32 plus 2.02 I get 171.32 now that will only tell me how many moles I have. And the question is, how many atoms do I have? So, I'm going through moles, HU moles, of barium hydroxide, and I want to go into atoms. Now, I can't really do that because this is not an atom. Okay? 
What do you call a grouping for an ionic compound? A formula unit. One mole is 6.02 E23 formula units of barium hydroxide. Now, I want to get out of formula units and go into atoms. And to do that, I need to know how many atoms are in one formula unit. One barium, two oxygens, two hydrogens, two plus two plus one is five. And then I go to my calculator, 2.50 divided by 171.32 times 6.02 E23 times 5. And I have 4.39, don't forget the most important part, E22 atoms of barium hydroxide. Percent composition and empirical formula. Percent composition is the same thing we've been doing to like find your grade for each one. Percent composition, percent by mass, it's always been by mass of each element in a compound. So what is the percent nitrogen in ammonia? Now you should be learning ammonia is NH3. Ammonium is NH4 positive. That's not what it's asking for. Ammonia is NH3. So the percent nitrogen in ammonia is just what's the mass of nitrogen? Go to the periodic table. And what's the mass total? 14.01 for one nitrogen plus 1.01 for hydrogen, but it's three times. So 14.01 divided by the total, not the other part, not by 3.03, .03, the total, times 100% if it makes you happy to show that, and you get 14.01 divided by 17.04, and you get 82.2% um, empirical formula. Simplest formula for a compound, it's just the ratio. Okay, it's the reduced ratio. Just a reduced ratio. Michael rambles three times more than Aaron, and Charlie rambles 30 times more than Michael. That would look like M3EC30. It's reduced. Okay, there's I couldn't divide these things. If this was a 3 as well, I could divide everything by 3, but I don't. So, there. To find the empirical formula from that data. By the way, our goal is to get into moles. Okay, I'll let you copy that down if you need to, but I'm going to try and get into whole moles and wiggle into whole numbers. Empirical formula for a compound that is 24.3% carbon, 4.1% hydrogen, the remainder chlorine. So what I'm going to do is assume 100 gram sample. So instead of 24.3%, I have 24.3 grams of carbon. I have 4.1 grams of hydrogen. And to figure out chlorine, I have 100 minus 24.3 minus 4.1. So 100 minus 24.3 minus 4.1 is 71.6 grams of chlorine. Now notice in this case chlorine is not diatomic, neither is hydrogen, because it's in a compound where it's already bonded to something else. So what I'm going to do is go through moles because that's what this compound is. It's going to be C something, H something, Cl something, X, Y, Z, those some things are going to be moles. So go to the periodic table, 12.01 grams of carbon and one mole of carbon. And then get out of grams of hydrogen. So to cancel grams of hydrogen, I go to the periodic table. And one mole of hydrogen times dividing bar. Go to the periodic table. 35.45. And then I ask my handy dandy calculator, 24.3. Whoops divided by 12.01 is 2.023 and then 4.1 divided by 1.01 .01 is 4.0594 notice how I th drag a lot of numbers in here um, divided by 35.45 and it's 2.0197 I basically keep all of them that I can now if I was a moron I would go, oh, those are moles, so I should just make it be C2.023, H4.0594, Cl2.0197, but we don't do that. We know it has to be whole numbers. We spent all that time working with that. So we need to get these into whole numbers. So let's divide by the smallest one. And I get um, 2.02331 divided by 2.0197, and I have 1.00, 4.0594 divided by 2.0197, and I have um, 2.00, whoops, no, I hit my button, 2.009, 1.00, 4.0594 
and then this is going to be 1. I'm going to put that in my calculator. These are close enough to whole numbers. So my answer is C1, CS C1, H2, CL1. Okay? Dick. Molecular formula is the exact formula. It's unreduced. So Aaron rambled twice, Michael six times, and Charlie 970 times. So M6. E2, I should have made this number that, something that's reducible. So we'll pretend that's reducible, but it's the exact number. To find the molecular formula from data, find the empirical formula, like you were shown before. We'll do tons more in class, I promise. Take the molecular formula and divide it by the empirical mass for the multiplier. So if the empirical formula found before had a molecular mass of 199, what is the molecular formula? It was CH2Cl. So what I'm going to do is go to the periodic table. So 12.01 plus... 2.02, .02, I doubled it, plus 35.45. All of those numbers came from the periodic table. And I have 12.01 plus 2.02 .02 plus 35.45, and it's 49.48. So what I'm going to do is take this number they gave me, 199, and divided it by 49.48, and I should get really, 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 really close to a whole number. And I get 4.02, and just get your undies out of a bundle and just call that 4. So what that means is my multiplier is 4. Therefore, I have C4H8Cl4 for my real formula. Okay. Again, we'll do lots more with this. Review. I always go through moles. Yay. Empirical formulas are moles. Okay. Molecular formulas are moles moles. Everything is moles. And we're going to find the form of a hydrate in fake lab pretty soon. So have a great Labor Day weekend. Toodles.